Welcome to the 14th video in the Assembly for Mobile tutorial series. In this video we are going to talk about update functions and how to utilize them, especially with the event structure. So first thing in this video is I wanted to show you uh, basically an app that basically encompasses a lot of the user interface elements that we've looked at so far. And so here at the top we've got a slider, we've got a stepper right here, we've got a, um, come on. No, I had it. <laughs> we had a numer numerical text field here. And we've got just a little rectangle down here in the corner. And this this is, you know, this is nothing new. You've probably gotten here already if you've been watching some of the user interface elements videos. Uh, but let's go back and um, I'm going to reflash this. I'm going to upload a a new sketch that basically looks the exact same but we've added update functions and we've added an event structure to it and uh, we'll see how it behaves once that gets uploaded okay so it's uploaded with the new code and here we go it looks the exact same as what we've seen so far but watch this I'm gonna I'm gonna touch the the stepper button here do you see that the slider moved over, the text field incremented, and watch the rectangle on the bottom. It's moving down. I'm going to go to the other side of the stepper. Now watch everything as I move the slider. See how everything's updating? And then we'll do... Um, Watch this. This is pretty cool. Watch the color of the rectangle. They went from magenta to blue there, and the slider moved over. All right. So what we've done is we've created interactivity between our functions, or between our uh, our elements on the screen here, and that's done using update functions in the event structure. So now you've seen how it, or you've seen what it does. Let's dive into how to do that in the code. Okay. So let's jump into the code here. What we've got is our standard skeleton code setup. And uh, the first thing that we need to do is we need to set up those uh, user interface elements that we saw. And uh, we'll, oops, we'll um, set up some global variables to hold their IDs. So we had a slider. Assembly for mobile draw rect. Okay, now we need to give all the necessary arguments here and uh, off the screen here I've got the numbers that I want to use so I'm going to just copy and paste you can of course put these anywhere on the screen that you want I just set it up like this with these numbers because I like the layout I'll explain a couple of these in the, the arguments here because a couple of them do uh, definitely count for something particularly related to the min and max. Okay, there we go. So the first two on the first two arguments on each of these elements is just the x and y. You should know that by now. And then this is the width for the slider, and then this is the minimum value for the slider and the maximum value for the slider. 1 and 10. That's that's actually important. And then the stepper Is this the stepper draw stepper? Oh, I did these out of order. Oops. And I say out of order, I mean compared to where I copied and pasted them. There we go. Okay, for the the text field here, uh, that's right there. That's the starting value for the text field. And since it's a digit, it's not a string, it knows that this field is going to hold uh, numerical values, numeric values. The stepper here, is x, y, width, which actually doesn't count for anything on the stepper. It's going to be as the same width no matter what you put in there, but I give it a value. And then here's the minimum value of the stepper and the maximum value of the stepper. And since the so the slider and the stepper are related, you saw when you uh, when I showed you earlier, if you modify one, it, it modifies the other, uh, you're going to want their minimum and maximum values to be the same. It's just going to help. It's not going going to break the program if you don't do it, but it's going to give you a little bit of sporadic behavior. Um, 
anyway, that's that's my recommendation. Make them the same. And then we drew the rectangle here, origin, width, height, color. Okay. This gives us just a dumb user interface. At this point, you can move the slider back and forth, just like the fir very first part of this video, but nothing happens. In order for any of this to uh, be interactive, we need to come down to the events function down here. And I think in video three of the series, the very first application video, I showed one bit from the event structure, and then in four and five, we talked a little bit more about the event structure. Um, so it shouldn't be totally foreign to you at this point. But I'm going to uh, set up something simple here. So we're going to look at the event ID, and we're going to say if the event ID is equal to the slider ID, or in this case, the name of the slider ID is just slider, then we're going to do something. And in this case, we are going to call an update function. And that is, there's, there are a number of update functions, but the one that we use mostly in this code, and I'll show you some others, is update value. So the stepper and the slider and the text field all have a value associated with them. For the slider and the stepper, that value is 1 through 10. For the text field, or the numeric text field here, it's actually any integer. <laughs> um, so there's, there's a little bit of... Uh, they don't line up so well there, but they still have a value. All three of those have a value associated with them. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to say, simply for mobile, that update value, we're going to say when the slider is adjusted, we want to update the value of this, the text field. So we pass in the ID right here of the element whose value we want to update. And then we say, give it this value, give, the, give it a new value. We're going to update that value to 45, just some standard, you know, basic integer. We could do that. But if we want the text field to represent the value of the slider, what we do is we go pass in the event.value um, variable there. So now, anytime you move the slider around, that triggers an event. And when the event ID is slider, it will call this function of update the value of the text field to the value of the event value. And in this case, that's the slider value. And then we can do the exact same thing with the stepper. You just pass in the stepper's ID, and we say give it the same value. So you can see where this is going. Um, what we can do here is we can uh, set up... I'm going to copy some code over here. Which is just So you see all I did is I brought in the functions for the text field and the functions for the stepper, depending on which event gets called. So in this case, if you tap the stepper, these three update functions will be called. And if you modify the value in the text field, these three functions will be called. And in these cases, what I have here are some other update functions. So right here, if you were if you modify the uh, text field, it will call an update color function. And we pass in the ID of the element whose color we want to update. And then this is this looks like really crazy right here, but I'm just gonna take that away right now. Update color, and we have to pass in a color um, data type, so the RGB, we've looked at those, or the RGBA. Uh, in this case, we'll, you know, we can just pass in an RGB, and we could update it to 0 to you know, 100 or something like that. That would give the rectangle a new color every single, it would give it a new color when you update the text field. But it's not a dynamic value, it's a static value, because those, are, those aren't going to change every time. So what I did, is I use the RGB function, and then for the red value of the rectangle, I gave it this, this interesting function of take the event value from the text field, multiply it by 25, and then subtract that from 250. And that'll give you the red value <laughs> for the uh, rectangle. And it'll be a 0 for the green, and then uh, 
another function to give you the blue value for the rectangle. So what this does is for any value 1 through 10, it's going to modify the rectangle from a red to a blue uh, on a, like a gradient scale there. But that's all to say you can update the color of <laughs> an element. In this case, we did the rectangle. And then down here, we show the update value. We can update the Y coordinate of an element, and we did the rectangle also for this one. So when you increase the stepper, the rectangle will be moved in its Y coordinate. And it will be moved by this value right here that I came up with. So it'll start, you know, when the stepper's value is 1, it'll be 1 times 20 plus 320. So its Y value will be 320. And as you keep tapping the stepper, increasing it, the rectangle's Y coordinate is going to increase. And it's going to be moving down the screen. Now up here we can do, uh, just to be complete for the code that I showed you at the very beginning here, or the application I showed you at the very beginning, was an update x function. And what we did with that was also the rectangle. But we could pass the stepper in here. We could pass the slider in there. It doesn't matter. Any valid element ID. And then we just give it, you know, where do you want the new x to be? And we, we did the very similar thing with making it dynamic based on the value of the slider. So this is the exact code that I have uploaded to the phone right now that I just showed you. Go ahead and throw this on there, play around with it, and you'll, you'll find there's a little bit of... Uh, some things aren't quite intuitive because when you move the slider it's going to update the value of the stepper, but that does not mean that the stepper's event is being called. So even though the stepper might be changing, or in, it's easier to see the, the text field value will be changing every time the slider is adjusted, that doesn't mean that the text field's event is being called. That means that the text field's value is being changed. So the, the rectangle won't be moving in the x and y direction at the same time because only one event is being called at the at one time. So it will only be moving in the x direction or only be moving in the y direction or only having its color updated based on the logic we have right here. But there are a number of update functions and I'm just going to pull the sheet up here for you to see. This is the, the Simbly for Mobile uh, document available from Simbly and Look at all these update functions that you can use. Update X, update Y, which we've seen. Update Width, update Height, update Origin, Size, update Rectangle, uh, update Color, basically Color 1, uh, but update Color, Color 2, update Value, which we've just used, update Text. Um, so there's these Set Visible. That's also an update function, just doesn't have update in the name. But go ahead and take a look at this document. It's available at Assembly's website. And... Uh, play around with some of this code and you'll be able to have a lot of the you know same learning experience of you know when I call this function what happens and uh, this is this is really getting into the heart of an interactive user interface so I know this video is a little long uh, but I think it's really worth it so thank you very much for watching um, I am actually not entirely sure what the next video is going to be I know that coming up we're going to do a multiple screens video, so stick around for that. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment, please. Um, thank you very much for watching. Alright, bye.